I don't know. I dislike it as a style. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. I think they're good beers. They're well-made beers. Yeah. I kind of understand where they're trying to get to, but for me, it doesn't work. And it is like with Brute IPA, where I was just like, I just don't, I just don't get it. Hey, Beer Geeks. So today we're tackling what must be the most Googled beer-related search term in 2022, which is... What is cold IPA? I know I've been Googling it, Johnny. <laughs> you still none the wiser? No idea. Well, I think, I think I have answers for you. And we're also, for the first time, this is the first time I'm going to have drunk a cold IPA. Wow. So we're going to put it to the taste test as well. Nice. And see if the internet lies. So every year in January, we make this video, which we try to predict what's going to be cool yes. or cold yes. uh, in the next year. And every year that we don't say it's IPA, we're wrong. Because it's always IPA. Like a sort of pool run of beer. Yeah. Ever sort of renewing, ever young, sort of Hollywood glory boy, never ageing, beautiful. Well, IPA's age, but yeah, Paul yeah. Rudd doesn't. And I'd say it's more like it's somebody who can't, gets constant face. It's a bit of a Madonna. So yeah. it just keeps coming back just when you yeah, think yeah, she's yeah, gone. Yeah. yeah. Have a facelift, reinvent themselves, and yeah. they're back and they're cool again. You're like, give someone else a turn, Madge. Yeah. But yeah. then she comes back <laughs> with another hot producer and some sort of veiny arms. <laughs> And, uh, you know, she's all kicking and screaming. So what is cold IPA, Johnny? <laughs> I, I don't know. The veiny arms of beer. Yes. <laughs> so cold IPA is this new style that's come out of the Pacific Northwest from a brewery called Wayfinder. Is that because West Coast has sort of slightly fallen out of favour? I think, yeah, there's a lot of it's not cool anymore. Yeah. How do we reinvent this? How make do we it make cool this again? cool again? Yeah. Well, since you mentioned West Coast, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a Westie. I like because it. Because that is the genesis of the cold IPA. This one comes from Verdant, who we have another beer from a little bit later. Uh, and Elusive, sorry, who are also two of our Patreons. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Um, so this is a classic West Coast IPA. Beautifully clear. Pale gold. Oh my god, that smells amazing. Oh, it's a familiar smell, isn't it? It's, it's floral, it's piney, there's no juice to it. No, 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 There's sweet kind of juice. honey as well, multi character to it. And hopefully we're going to get big bitterness, crispness, yeah, um, and a little bit of kind of caramel honey sweetness as well. Cheers. To Westies, mate. To Westies. Long may, they, long, long may they live. Oh. Great stuff from Verdant. Yeah, that is a, like, for a, a hazy brewer, that... Yeah. That is absolutely stunning. Loads of lovely pine and uh, definitely like honey more than caramel. There's, there's no sort of caramel in there mm. or, or crisp or anything like that. But what we get is that kind of what we'd refer to as like California IPA kind of character. Pine, lemon, grapefruit. Big bitterness. Citrusy forest, big bitterness. Yeah, a little bit of dank. Not yeah. loads of dank, but a little bit of dank. Now, if you could improve the West Coast IPA, not yeah. necessarily this specific one, but any West Coast IPA, what would you do to it? Maybe with these days, with people with Nipahs enjoying the sort of softer, sweeter side of things, maybe it's ramping things down a little bit. So, like, in the, in the opposite direct, almost reaction to New England IPA. Potentially. Well, that is exactly what the brewers at Wayfinder tried to do. Right. So they said that their cold IPA is a direct reaction against New England. I don't think because they hate New England, but because they want, if we're going to go that far, juicy, dank, velvety, thick. Yes. With three Cs. They want to go the other way. They want to go crisp, light, bitter, banging. Right? So that is what we should look for in a cold IPA. And to achieve that, we're going to get into the technicals. So we've talked about what a West Coast IPA should be. Yeah. And we've talked about the idea that it should be getting lighter, crisper, I guess more crushable almost. Yeah. That's interesting because I, I already find West Coast like way more crushable than New England. Yeah. For instance. So it's like it's making it even more like a lager or something almost. Pretty much, yeah. Right. So that, that's very much the direction that they're going. So a cold IPA, the clue's in the name, it's an IPA that's been cold fermented. Yes. Right, so they've used either a lager yeast or a yeast that can ferment at, you know, probably around 8 to 12 degrees and then you'd, you'd lager it, at, you know, close to freezing. But there's another star that does that, isn't there, Bradley? Yeah, I guess the IPL, but you don't really see those much these days. You don't see them very often. And actually, I think that the, the motivation behind them and some of the technicalities are a little bit different. Mm. So an IPL, India Pale Lager, essentially that is an all-out West Coast IPA but it's made with a lager yeast, right? Yeah. So that means that you'll pro it'll probably be a little bit crisper, it'll probably be a little bit lighter, but nothing else really changes, like the dry hops are the same, the malts are the same. So you're just trying to make a, perhaps a slightly drier, but definitely a kind of crisper, quicker finishing IPA. The cold IPA mm. does want to do that and yes. uses the same sort of 
you know, lagering and yeast techniques, but it does extra stuff. So the first thing is that they actually use light lager malts. Okay. So we can expect maize in all of these cold IPAs. So like literally like corn. Okay. Uh, probably almost certainly Pilsner malts, which you might get in some West Coast IPAs, the really, really pale ones, but it's not that common. Yes. Um, you might even get rice, like a rice lager, macro kind of lager. And what you definitely won't get is any caramel, any Munich malt, any, any of that stuff that's bringing rich depth to it. Yeah, I guess that over time with a Westie can become a little bit chlorine. Exactly, exactly yeah. that, yeah. It just takes away a bit of drinkability and it adds complexity. This isn't really about complexity, although I don't really know that. I haven't tried one before, so we're about to find out. The last thing yeah. I just want to say is that the hopping regime is slightly different. Okay. So you're using exactly the same hops, but you're using them in a slightly different way. So with most West Coast IPAs, modern West Coast IPAs, you'll be finishing the fermentation, crashing it down real cold, and then tossing in your dry hops for about 48 hours and getting as much raw hop, juicy character, or yes. piney character, or citrus character as you can out of those hops at those cold temperatures. Mm. And then you package it, send it out fresh. With a cold IPA, you actually hop during fermentation, generally slightly towards the end of fermentation. Okay. And what that means is you reduce the chance of getting the kind of powdery, less drinkable finish that you can often get with big, heavy, cold, dry yeah, hops. Yeah. And you also guarantee a bit of biotransformation. So that's where the yeasts uh, are breaking down uh, flavor compounds in the hops and creating new Mm -hmm. compounds, which you don't get if you add after fermentation. Mm -hmm. So that's the other difference. So they're trying to preserve drinkability by avoiding the powderiness while still ensuring they're getting lots of lots of really big hop character out of it. Amazing. I'm salivating. Shall we have a go on one? Dude, I can't wait. Because it's all theory at this point. <laughs> Certainly as far as I'm concerned, I've never tried one. This comes from Fremont. So they, uh, they're they up in Seattle. And is that is that a pelican? Uh, it's maybe a crane. Well, maybe a crane. Yeah, he might be right. I think yeah. it's a crane. It oh, is coastal. Yeah. It's sort of like a, a sort of maritime climate in Seattle, i.e. it rains all of the time. <laughs> but Fremont I found a little bit uh, more sunny and lovely. There you go. Well, this is That's, like sunshine in a glass. That is sunshine in a glass. I mean, I've been told they should be super clear. This one has a little bit of chill haze to it or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Definitely some haze, but it is ultra pale, you it's know? Like, it's like the same colour as it's my almost, yeah, top, yeah, pretty much, yeah. right? Wow, but there's loads of aroma to that. Candied lemon. It's lemony, isn't it? Yeah, really lemony. Like, it's a juicy aroma than I thought. Like there is a kind of almost mosaic-y stratery, that kind of mm. passion fruity, sticky, sticky tart kind yeah. of aroma to it. More like, juicy than I expected. It's, yeah, it's not like tropical juice, but it's definitely like a citrusy yeah. juiciness component for sure. Well, I, I think there's some tropical, but let's see if that translates to the palate because it should be. I mean, this this has corn in the mash. Yeah. This is ultra dry, um, and you'd presume that there's there's going to be water treatment to make it really crisp as well. Um, here's to our first. It's not often we get to drink new styles on the channel that we've never Amazing. had before. So really here's to excited. a brand new style. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> as soon as that's in your mouth, you can tell that's not a Westie no. and not a New Englander. Like really fine, bright carbonation, mm. zero body to it. Mm. Big lingering bitterness. Yeah. Big lingering bitterness to it. Some residual juiciness, but yeah, cracker dry. Jacob's cracker dry. It's dry, it's really smooth as well. It's got yeah. like an interesting mouthfeel to it. Um, it feels like a little bit thicker than uh, a Westie, but not quite mm. as sort of thick as, a, as an Ypres. I think you mean moussey. So another thing that I read on the Wayfinder website, I believe, or maybe on one of the articles that quoted the guys from Wayfinder, is that they also dry hop during the spunding. So they're doing it when the tanks are closed off, right? Right. So when you add those hops, you're going to, it's still fermenting, you're going to get a little bump in fermentation as well. You'll probably get a bit of hop creep. So you, you're going to create your own carbonation and the creation of your own fine uh, carbonation is often finer, mm. more moussey. So I think that really helps with this style. It's almost like a Czech lager feel to it is what yeah, I get from that. Yeah, it's always like foamy in yeah. a way. Yeah. It's, it's very textured somehow. I was expecting it to be way crisper. You know, there is juiciness to it, sweet, like perceived sweetness to it. Yeah. I thought this was going to be pine, lemon, Jacob's Cracker. And it's got all of that, but it's underpinned with a really smooth mouthfeel. And yeah, some juicy elements. It's an interesting one for sure. Right, so surprised by that like delicious beer 
mostly met sort of the technicals that I'd learned about. Yeah. But threw some other stuff in there that was a bit surprising. So so now this is this is why I wanted to do Verdant because I knew that they had a great West Coaster and I knew that they had a cold IPA so that we could see what the difference is going to be within a brewery. Yes. You know how it's being interpreted. See there we go. That looks like crystal it's crystal clear. clear. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that looks like a macro lager. Lighter, for sure, definitely. I, I couldn't Very... tell you exactly what a macro lager looks like, but it's just, it's that. It's it, look, that. it looks like a, a Mexican bottle of Corona or something. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. Is it, what's the sort of malt bill on this? Has this got any... So this, again, has in? corn, maize, right. uh, and then it's Pilsner, it's Hannah Pilsner malt. Oh, wow. Which is like a heritage, yeah. the original Pilsner malt from Pilsner Raquel. Um, and then there's a touch of wheat in there. See, this one, I mean, smells a lot like that. I'm trying to see, are there, are there hops in common? Simcoe Columbus, there's talus in that. Talus. That was nicely done, I didn't call that. Nice. Citra Eclipse Strata talus. So some similar hops in there. They do have something in common. Um, so there's a little bit of coconut-y. Yeah, there maybe is, yeah. slightly. Co I'm coconut cream. And then, yeah, grapefruit <sighs> and pine. It smells wonderful. That smells like a lovely West Coaster. Talus yeah. is really nice in West Coast styles. I don't particularly love it in New England, but it's really nice in Westies. These are not as resiny though as like old Westies. No, that definitely that resinous, sticky quality is all gone. Because yeah. that resinous kind of comes both from the hops and from the use of caramel, and they come together to make it feel sticky. Yeah, like a sort so of toffee losing. apple kind of vibe or something. Yeah. So again, there's that creamy mouthfeel. Yeah. It's, yeah, like identical foamy creaminess. Yeah. How str I mean, I mean that's good. I guess that they're both doing it. It's strange. I find that quite a strange mouthfeel right. for for an for an IPA in general. And it's really not what I expected. Like I understood from the technicalities that you might end up with that, but it that doesn't feel that crisp because like Czech pilsners are not that crispy. You know, like German pilsners are the crispy lines yeah, we yeah. think of. That. Is, makes it smooth and feel sweeter. That corn character is definitely there as well. It's really, it's really not what I expected. I was expect, I think in my head I was expecting brute IPA almost. And they both are quite dry, but there's a perceived kind of sweetness coming through. I think the idea, the concept, was to move even further towards, like past West Coast, right? Yeah. And this feels like it's sort of pulled back in a bit. It, the term I think was that was used on the Wayfinder website was more west than west coast. Like all of the hop character, but yeah. even crisper, lighter, like just focusing more on the hops. And I think this does do that. I think they hit that brief, but along with it was supposed to be, supposed to come, I think, a real crisp lightness of malt character. But actually, I think the use of maize means you end up with a fair amount of, of malted character, whether, be it corn rather than barley. Because if I were going to sit down and drink a pint of really hoppy beer, of yeah. these three, I'd reach for that every time. Yeah. Because I also think that there's a mistake that's being made here. By focusing purely on the hops, what you're removing is the wonderful synergy of all of those ingredients. So what, we, what we've now got is a co hoppy, corny beer, mm -hmm. which I'm not particularly enjoying. Whereas this, where, where you, you've, you've got kind of caramel notes, bready notes, brown bread notes that work incredibly well with all of this citrus and pine and resin. It all builds together, doesn't it? And yeah. it adds up it more slots, than some of the So the fact both examples are very similar mm. means I don't think they've misinterpreted it. No, I mean, and the fact they're very similar would imply that there is a genuine technical difference from IPLs and from Westerns. Yeah. I, I just think that if, if they were aiming to make it crisper and lighter, in any way, it misses that brief by using maize. And I don't know whether it's my palate, like I can mm. pick up maize, when we've done the macro lager tastings, and I constantly talk about them tasting like sweet corn, it's because that jumps out at me in a macro beer. Yeah. That, that is the character of a macro beer, and that's what I'm getting from this. And I think that's a weird thing to put next to citrus, um, pine, resin, grapefruit. It doesn't quite feel right to me. But it sounds like quite a nice Mexican dish. You know, if, if it was just 100% Pilsner malt, lager yeast, you know, may, maybe it's the biotransformation as well is adding to that perceived sweetness. I don't know. I dislike it as a style, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. I think they're good beers. They're well-made beers. Yeah. I kind of understand where they're trying to get to, but for me, it doesn't work. And it is like with Brute IPA, where I was just like, I just don't, I just don't get it. So basically, they're trying to fix something that isn't broken. Potentially. Yeah, I mean, quite often, and I'm sorry, brewers, 
and we're guilty of this as well, sometimes brewers get bored of making the same beers, tasting the same beers, so they try to fix something that isn't a problem, they're just oversaturated with it. Which is why, you know, every brewer in the world at the moment is making Pilsners, yeah. and making them pretty poorly, most of them. It's because they're like, I'm bored of IPA, or I'm bored of, of whatever it is, so I'm going to make Pilsners and try and make everybody else love Pilsners. Yes but they're not necessarily making great pilsners. And I feel like these people have gone, I'm sick of New England IPA, so I'm going to make the opposite of New England IPA. But the opposite of New England IPA turns out isn't great. No. And I don't think it's the opposite either. I think it's somewhere in the middle. So I'm not sure I like them either, Johnny. Yeah. Not for us, no. but it has seen success. I think this is going to be more long-lasting than Brute IPA because I think the differences are yeah. bigger. Uh, I think what? the concept is more exciting to drinkers. Yes. But it's not exciting to us. No, but I do at the same time very much applaud the experimentation, the willingness to try and create something new and exciting, take IPA in a different direction. Always applaud that. You know? Brilliant. We, that, that's how craft beer continues to improve. Right. You know? So keep doing that. One of these days they're going to hit it on the head and I mean, it's going to be incredible. I think they did with New England. Yeah. Uh, anyway, cheers, man. Cheers. Uh, to warm IPA, I mean to West Coast IPA. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.